Hello all, my name is Ashutosh Rastogi. I am a teacher by profession. My mission is to impart quality education for all. For that purpose, I am creating these videos. If you appreciate my work, then please do like my video and subscribe my channel so that I could get the motivation to prepare more videos. Anyways, today in this particular lecture, we are going to discuss about your rake receiver. So these are the outlines. We are going to start up with the introduction. Then we are going to discuss about multipath, what it is. Then we are going to discuss what is rake receiver, which will be followed by the block diagram description of rake receiver. Then we are going to discuss the working principle or working of rake receiver, which will be followed by the several applications of your rake receiver. And finally, we are going to conclude by discussing some of the advantages as well as disadvantages associated with your rake receiver. So the basic idea of rake receiver was actually being given by Prince and Green in 1956. So it is basically your CDMA based receiver or you could say that rake, rake receiver would have been used in your CDMA based systems where we are using this spread spectrum communication. So it would have been proposed to combat with the multipath fading effect since multipath effect is responsible for the degradation of our signal. So it would have been developed to uh, reduce that effect. So it is achieved by using several sub receivers each delayed slightly to tune into the individual multipath component. Since multipath component are arriving from different path then obviously the time at which they were going to receive at the receiver that will be different. So we just have to use this several sub receivers which are tuned to that slightly delayed multipath component. What are they? We will going to see in our upcoming slides. So first of all, we should understand what is multipath. So multipath occurs when radio frequency signals arrives at the destination via different path due to the reflected transmitted signals from moving or fixed object. So suppose if we understand this, this is our transmitter and this is our receiver. So when transmitter will going to transmit its signal, then receiver will going to receive the signal which are reflected and diffracted as well as uh, scattered from multiple components such as your buildings, trees, etc. So here at this particular receiver, we will be having multiple components. One is your direct path and the combination of multiple components. So if we closely observe that this particular figure, it is basically reflecting the amount of amplitude or signal strength we are receiving at the receiver and these your tau1, tau2, tau m up to tau m these are basically signifying various delays at which we are getting the multiple copies of the same signal. So obviously here at particular tau 1 we will be having this peak and at particular tau 2 that, that peak is actually for uh, your uh, second multipath component and similarly up till m that if we consider that we will be having this your m multipath component then this peak is basically representing the maximum amount of signal received after tau m delay. So rake receiver is a diversity receiver because the multipath component are statistically independent or uncorrelated if the propagation delay is greater than the chip period that is propagation delay T of PD is greater than TC. So it has been observed that if the propagation delay is much greater than your uh, chipping duration or it is at least equal to TC or it is greater than TC then in that particular case several multipath will going to be less correlated or they are highly uncorrelated. So it will be easier to catch away these uncorrelated signals or frequency components. So if signal components arrive more than the duration of chip period then the rake receiver can be used to resolve and combine them since they are highly uncorrelated and it is an observed phenomena. If the multipath signals are arriving greater than the chipping sequence or single chip duration TC then they will be highly uncorrelated. So the rake receiver uses a multipath diversity principle that is at the receiver how we will going to combine them we are basically applying this uh, MRC techniques. So what is it we will going to discuss further. So first of all we will need to discuss what is rake receiver. So a rake receiver is a radio receiver which has been designed to counter the effect of multipath fading and how it will going to do that. Do that. First of all, we need to understand its uh, block diagram structure that is what it is made up of and how it will going to nullify the effect of multipath fading. 
so since rake receiver would have been employed in your cdma systems so here rt is basically cdma received signal at the receiver so since signals are coming from multiple path so this your m1t m2t up to mmt these are representing different multi path component and they would have been passed to the corresponding correlator which would have been tuned to that particular peak associated with that multipath component as we had already discussed that your first multipath component is arriving at your tau 1 then at second multipath component is arriving at your tau 2 and up to uh, mth uh, time uh, that tau m at particular tau m we will be receiving this mmth signal component and all these correlators are basically tuned that time shifted or delayed version of that particular signal then the outcome of your correlator is your uh, representing by this particular symbol that is your z1 z2 or up to zm then they will going to pass through your weighing network and that weighing coefficient would have been given as your alpha 1 alpha 2 up to alpha m these weighing coefficient are basically being uh, defined on the basis of how much amount of snr level we are receiving in a particular multipath component if the received snr of any given multipath component is high in that particular case we will going to assign the higher value to uh, that particular component and if we are getting lower snr then we will going to assign the lower value of that weighing factor then after that all these things would have been passed to the summer where we have to perform the linear combination of all those components and after proper signal normalization we will going to pass it through your integrator in order to evaluate the signal strength or power of that particular signal that will be equivalent to z and on the basis of z we will going to determine that which particular bit would have been received that is whether it is 0 or 1 depending upon this threshold value. I mean for sim simplification if we consider that threshold value would be equal to 0 then if the value of z is greater than or equal to 0 then the received symbols would have been determined as your 1 and if it is lesser than your threshold value 0 then it would have been evaluated as your 0. So this is how we will going to receive our signal MT which would have been transmitted from the transmitter. Now we will going to discuss into the greater detail of the working of your rake receiver. So the rake receiver uses several baseband correlators to individually process several signal multipath component. This we had already discussed that uh, we will be having different baseband correlators associated to different multipath component. These M correlators or sub receivers in the rake receiver are called fingers. So there is a special name given to them that is your fingers and the rake name is also uh, being special or important just as we use our rake gardening tool in order to collect those grass species in the similar manner rake receiver also tries to collect the actual signal from available multipaths so that is why the name rake receivers comes into picture so now each correlator detects the time shifted version of the original cdma transmission this we had already discussed that each correlator would have been tuned to a specific time shifted version of the original CDMA transmission that is your correlator one would have been tuned to your tau one we will be having that particular uh, uh, time delay from transmission to reception at particular time instant tau one we are receiving this your uh, uh, first multipath component and at your tau two we are receiving that your second multipath component and similarly at tau one we are receiving that mth multipath component. So individual correlator would have been tuned to that time shifted version of the original transmitted CDMA sig signal. So now each finger of the rake receiver correlates to the portion of the signal which is at least delayed by one chip in time TC with the other fingers. It is one of, this is one of the most important point that we need to understand that our correlators will only going to function well if other multipath component are highly uncorrelated. Just because if this is not being the case, then in that particular case, all the multipath component will going to club together or they will going to distort each other. So it is our assumption as well as observed phenomena that if multipath component is having at least the delay of uh, TC or greater than that, then they are highly uncorrelated. So why considering this particular fact only, we are in a state to collect all the multipath component. 
So now the output of each correlator, which would have been denoted as your Z1, Z2 up to Zm, they are being weighted with your alpha1, alpha2 and alpha m to provide the better estimate of the transmitted signal than provided by the single component. So this also we had discussed that uh, each correlator output would have been denoted as your Z1, Z2 up to Zm and they are actually being weighted with this uh, specific component that is your alpha1, alpha2 and alpha m so that we are in a state to get the better estimate of the transmitted signal provided by the single component. Suppose if we do not possess uh, this sort of operation and we if we are only considering the single multipath component and if due to some reason that multipath component will going to have lower SNR due to the bad characteristics of channel. So in that particular case we will going to get the very bad signal reception. Whereas if we are considering this multipath phenomena and we are observing all those multipath component then there might be the chances that only a single path will going to go through your bad channel characteristics but other paths may not or other paths may have much better SNR. Since all these multipath component will going to carry the same amount of information so if we will going to club them or we will going to consider the contribution of all those multipath component and we will going to get a combined signal. So that combined signal obviously will going to have much better characteristics in comparison to your single multipath component. So this is the thing that we will going to exploit in your rake receiver. So obviously the question comes into our mind that how we will going to weight them or how we will going to provide the uh, weighting of different multipath component. So the phenomena is quite simpler. So if the received power or the SNR is small then the correlator will be assigned a small weighing factor and if the received power or the SNR is higher then we will going to give the larger weighing factor. So then the weighing coefficients are normalized to the output signal power of the correlator in order to get the actual signal at the output or detect at the output. So how we will going to perform that normalization? So this is the formula for normalization alpha m will be equal to z m square upon summation m starts from 1 to m z of m square. So if you closely observe that your alpha 1 will be equal to z 1 square over z 1 square plus z 2 square plus z 3 square up to z m square. Similarly for alpha 2 or your second multipath component uh, this weight will have been defined as your z 2 square upon z1 square plus z2 square up to zm square. So we can easily conclude that if the contribution of any multipath component is larger or we could say that if the SNR in a particular multipath component is higher then that alpha m value would be higher and if the contribution or SNR will be lower then the value of alpha m will, will be lower. So the value of alpha m will always going to lie between 0 and 1 and one more relationships that hold good that is your alpha 1 plus alpha 2 plus alpha 3 up to alpha m that will be equal to 1. So that normalization is also quite important just because we need to evaluate the actual signal z through which we will going to evaluate the transmitted symbol. So the correlator output are combined to achieve improved communication reliability as well as the performance. So how we will going to improve that reliability and how we will going to improve that performance that we had already discussed that we are basically taking the average of all those multipath component in order to capture the actual information. And one more important point is here we are not at all only taking the average we are basically taking the weighted average. So obviously those multipath component who at the receiving side will going to have larger value of SNR they will be going to given weight much larger so that their contribution would be higher in order to get the actual signal reception. So this is how they will going to basically add some reliability at the reception. So a weighing network is used to provide the linear combination of the correlator output for a bit decision. This is also we have discussed. Then how we will going to linearly combine that particular signal? We have basically used an adder at uh, your block structure. So how linear combination will going to take place? So that combined signal would have been given as Z prime will be equal to M starts from 1 to M alpha M Zm. So how alpha would have been defined that we had already discussed 
and Z1, Z2, Z3, they are basically showing the different outcomes of your correlators. So basically Z prime will be given as alpha 1, Z1 plus alpha 2, Z2 plus alpha 3, Z3 up to alpha M, Zm. So this is your combined signal which we are going to get at the summer. So Z prime is the received signal after elimination of the multipath effect. So how we have reduced or eliminated this multipath component via providing the weighting methods of uh, high SNR value. We have given basically high uh, weight and for lower SNR value or we could say that uh, due to bad channel characteristics if certain component is having low SNR then we are basically omitting or avoiding the contribution of that particular thing or we are basically giving the low uh, value to its weight and we basically incorporating those multipath component which is having higher reliability or higher SNR. So after receiving this Z prime now we have to perform this D spreading since we are using our CDMA system so or which is your nothing but your spread spectrum system so at your receiving side we have to perform this D spreading operation also in order to obtain the symbol value Z which, were, which would have been transmitted from the transmitter side. So now the bit decision is performed on the basis of the value of Z that is if the received symbol value is greater than Z obviously here 0 is representing that threshold value. So if receives so if received symbol is greater than the threshold value 0 or received symbol Z is less than 0. So depending upon this particular criteria we will going to obtain the received symbol. So obviously if received symbol Z is greater than 0 or this threshold 0 then symbol 1 will be detected and if it is less than 0 then symbol 0 will be detected. So this is how basically we will going to obtain the transmitted symbol from the transmitter at the receiver. So these are the applications. So rake receiver is basically used in CDMA and WCDMA as an efficient way of multipath signal reception whereas several receptors are able to reconstruct the signal with different time codes, amplitude as well as phase. So this would have been basically used in your CDMA and WCDMA based systems especially uh, these radio devices which are your mobile phone as well as wireless LAN. So this is the application. So the whole objective of this uh, using this uh, rake receiver is to obtain the high SNR value of the signal at the receiving side so that we are in a state to increase the reliability as well as performance of the system. So these are the advantages as well as disadvantages associated with your rake receiver. So the advantages are improved SNR since we are using that weighted sum and we are taking the contribution of all the multipath component. So obviously we will going to have the improved SNR at the receiver. If SNR is higher side then performance will also be increased or we could say that if SNR is higher then bit error rate will be lower. So these are the advantages associated with your rake receiver that we are going to have improved SNR as well as its better performance of the system. Then the disadvantages are cost, size as well as complexity. Since in our block structure we had already seen that it is using multiple correlators associated with your multipath. So if we are using multiple correlators obviously that cost will going to increase and since we are using multiple correlators then obviously size is also going to increase and apart from that if in order to detect only a single signal the circuit complexity which will going to have this uh, higher complex circuitry or large number of uh, components that will going to increase the complexity of our receiver. So these are the disadvantages. So hopefully you will get the better idea or understanding about your rake receiver. In case of any doubt you can ask me in the comment section. I will try to solve them as soon as possible. So these are the references. Thank you very much for your patient hearing.